Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan. Now, this week on the show, we bring you part two of our special series, The Unicorn Health Check, a show that delves deeper into what's working and what's not for India's billion dollar startups. Today, we explore the real and the estimated market that India is targeting. Over $80 billion have been invested in 102 unicorns with a combined valuation of over $350 billion, many of which are valued at 10 times their global peers. However, most unicorns spend between a rupee and a half to two rupees to earn a single rupee of revenue, prioritizing growth over profit for now. But what is the big prize that India's billion dollar startups are going after? Let me show you. Now, India has the world's second largest internet user base with about 780 million users today. That's twice as many as the US. And by 2030, it's estimated that India is expected to surpass China and have the most internet users globally with over a billion users. Now, can you imagine India's digital bazaar by 2030? Over a billion Indians spending an estimated average seven hours on the internet every single day. That's two hours more than the Chinese. And that's the India consumer story that unicorns are supposedly going after. However, let's take a look at where the market stands as of today. The overall consumer market is about a trillion dollars, serving a population of 1.4 billion people. Now, this is the business that most B2C unicorns consider. However, and here's a closer look at the numbers that are available with us, the market is much smaller and the obtainable market is even more so. The same applies to B2B unicorns going after 65 million MSMEs. The reality is less than a million of these small businesses are active or repeat customers. Now, while the opportunity is immense, the valuations for the most part seem far removed from reality. And that brings us to the reality of the actual users. As of 2022, half a billion Indians are not active transactors, meaning they do not engage in online transactions. Only about 300 to 325 million people actually transact online. But these users tend to be opportunistic with low loyalty. The more mature users who are frequent online shoppers and spend about half of their wallet online are only about 40 to 45 million. It is projected that this number could increase to 150 million by 2030. But even then, it would still be less than 20% of the real market. So let's pause here to ask the question, how deep and wide is India's digital bazaar? Let me show you what our unicorns are actually catering to. And let's start with Zomato. Of India's 40 to 45 million frequent internet users, just about 17 million make up Zomato's monthly active users. Let's switch to Nika, company that's targeting 180 to 190 million online shopper base. It gets regular orders from just about 24 million active buyers. This gives us a sense of the real market versus the opportunity. Now let's talk about Baidu's. It has the largest group of school-going kids in the world as its target market, 350 million. So while it's impressively registered half of that population, guess how many are actually paying customers? Only 7.5 million pay any money at all to buy juice. For Cars24, which operates in India's fragmented used car market that sold 4.4 million cars, in FI22, Cars24 had less than 1% share. The scope of the market is also visible when we look at the Indian stock market. Now, in a nation of 140 crore people, just about 8 to 9 crore hold a DMAT account. And India's top broker, Zeroda, has a usership of 1 crore. The picture is not very different from the enterprise side either. Of the 65 million micro, small and medium businesses in India, off businesses client base stands at about 0.7 million. Which brings me to the big question that we are asking. Are founders and investors overestimating growth prospects and the target market size? How long will it take for startup revenues to start justifying the valuations that they command? And finally, will the next set of startup IBOs get real?
And joining me now to help answer these questions and more, Nitin Kamath, the founder and CEO of Zeroda, and Rahul Taneja, partner at Lightspeed India Partners. Nitin, Rahul, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Nitin, I want to start by asking you, you know, before we talk about the prescription, let's get the diagnosis right. And I want to understand from your perspective, what do you see as the big problem, the big malaise that India's startup ecosystem is facing today? Yeah, I think I think it's hard to generate revenue from you know uh, from a large group of Indians. You know, I think you know to be able to generate revenue, I, I can't see how you can really generate revenue from the top five crore Indians. You know, it, it's very uh, hard to figure, and, and and I think people are struggling there. You know, so uh, like even even in broking, you know, I think I, I somehow feel that we've kind of hit a plateau. Uh, uh, because the new user growth has dropped, the existing user growth, uh, existing users aren't really, you know, adding more uh, uh, as such. So I think I think the big challenge is that while India is a large country, uh, we're still a poor country, and the real problem to solve in this country is to kind of, you know, uh, get rich inclusively, you know, get get a lot more Indians, uh, you know, to a position where they can actually spend money online. You know? I mean, I think we're still some time away from that happening. So, you know, if I were to understand what you're saying, and I, I know that this is a point that you've been reiterating for a while, and it doesn't seem like you've changed your perspective on this, Nitin. You're basically saying that the monetizable opportunity has been grossly overestimated. Yeah, many times over. <laughs> so. Many times over. That's as real as it gets. Rahul Taneja, you know, let's talk about this. Yes, India is a large market. Yes, India is a growing market. Internet users are getting adding, added on, uh, uh, you know, month on month. But how many of those users who are being added on have paying capacity, have spending power? To Nitin Kamath's point, that there has been a gross overestimation, in his words, many times over, of the potential, the monetizing potential of this market. And hence, uh, it's out of whack when we talk about uh, estimations, valuations, uh, and the kind of growth prospects uh, that both the VC community as well as the Unicorn ecosystem is expecting or anticipating. Yeah, thanks, Shireen. Thanks for having me over. Um, I mean, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, to give you an example, you know, every time somebody talks about, you know, beauty as a category, for example, everyone looks at Unilever and says, okay, you know, this is the number of towns and number of consumers they're serving, but people forget it took money, many, many decades over in order to create reach and the right product for these consumers, right? So I think there is some amount of overestimation and beyond that, I think people think that, uh, you know, capital can solve for creation of uh, suitable products or propositions that may attract these consumers, right? But that is not sort of, that is not very uh, obvious to start off with, right? So uh, most definitely, yes, I think the amount of paying population we have, as Nitin said, is, is limited. Um, and, you know, the important point is people first need to start off from uh, you know, who their customer is going to be and is there value to be delivered to that customer. Everything else follows from that. Um, and I think the smarter guys zero in on that very, very quickly. Uh, and that is where they prosper. Mm. You know, Rahul, the question of who your customer is, does your customer have paying capacity and so on and so forth, I would imagine that these ought to have been questions that w have been asked by VCs of the uh, unicorns that they've invested in and answered suitably and appropriately by those startup founders as well. There seems to have been a disconnect. Uh, how do you explain that, Rahul? Y you know, was it because of, of an era of easy money where you didn't really have to worry about where the next check was coming, or, uh, coming from or even even the size of the checks that were coming your way, did that just get the ecosystem to gloss over addressing some of these crucial existential issues? Yeah, I think the great question, I think the question is about what do you prioritize, right? First, do you prioritize understanding your customer and developing a proposition that is attractive to them? Or do you, pro do you, know, you, do you prioritize uh, scaling over first understanding whether what you have is working or not? And, you know, in an era of cheap capital, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, uh, including the investment community, prioritize scale over first solving for that problem. Um, and that really is at the heart of the, the problems that many of these companies face. 
Yeah, that's just one of the problems. But uh, Nitin, I want to come back to you and to pick up on what Rahul was talking about. And this takes me back to the conversation that I had with the World Bank president just uh, 24 hours ago, uh, lamenting about what this era of zero interest rates across the world has actually done uh, and how that hasn't allowed for the creative destruction that otherwise we would have seen, how it's led to a plethora of zombie companies across the world. And now as we move from an environment of higher interest rates, perhaps for longer, what would it mean uh, in the specific context, for instance, of the Indian startup ecosystem as well, Nitin? No, I mean, I think this is, you know, when I look back to the last four or five years, I mean, this is something that sticks out as in we've ended up creating so many non-resilient businesses that that can potentially be sitting ducks if you know if this winter lasts for two three years and and it's not good for the ecosystem it's not good for the country it's not good for anyone right as in i mean uh, uh, also see the other angle in this right is that uh, uh, you know like you know people talk about tax rationalization you know so one of the one of the, one of the things is that today the the you know if you had to take money out of a company trying to profit you know through dividends versus through capital gains uh, you know, the tax differential is so much. And I mean, you can, you know, you, capital gains short, you know, is 20%. You know, if you want to take money through dividend, you end up paying 60, 70%. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that, you know, even the investors today, you know, I, I, you know, I get to sit on a few boards, right? I mean, I don't think investors today really look for profitability, right? I mean, they are looking at creating max valuations, right? Because max valuations, you know, exiting through capital gains is really a very tax efficient way to be able to make money versus trying to take profits out paying, you know, whatever, uh, like, you know, two and a half times more taxes. Uh, so it, it probably also, you know, this whole cheap capital is also kind of, you know, I think wired everyone to think of business as valuations and not in terms of, mm. uh, you know, business in terms of, uh, you know, like profitability, right? So, and and these winters will come, right? I mean, I don't know how this will last, but uh, yeah, but there's a problem. There's a problem, you know, if I think we got lucky uh, as India that uh, we raised a lot of money, uh, you know, in the last one, two years. So I think, you know, a lot of these startups have, a lot of startups have a lot of runway, at least, you know, they have runway till mid next year, I think. So I think the real trouble would be like, if, if this winter mm -hmm. doesn't come by then, um, we probably will have an issue mm -hmm. in the you know, sorts. When you say that there will be an issue, I want you to explain to me, uh, you know, what that could potentially mean. And you're saying that many, because they raised ahead of time, uh, do have a runway up until uh, the middle of next year. But what could this issue potentially look like, Nitin Kamath? You're saying that there, there are many who could, in your words, be sitting ducks who may not last uh, if we do see this funding winter continue. Uh, quantify for me what this issue could potentially look like. Yeah, no, see, the thing is, if, you know, if you're not able to raise money and, you know, you're running out of money, I mean, the issue is, you know, you, you can't survive, you know, that's really the issue, as in, uh, and, the, and the thing is, it's, it's very hard, you know, if you haven't already built a business where a customer is paying for you, it's very hard to get a customer suddenly, you know, if you stop all discounts, you know, stop all freebies and suddenly expect that a customer will, you know, somehow turn up and, you know, pay for you for something, you know, he wasn't paying, you know, that behavior change, you know, we've seen it at Zeroda as well, you know, reducing costs is like, you know, everyone will love you for it, but, you know, to increase, you know, even, like, you know, even if you had to increase by one rupees, you know, the fire you get is, is just incredible, you know, so India is really hard when it comes to, you know, uh, you know, to the ability to be able to make money from the masses. So, uh, so yeah, so, I mean, it is, uh, the issue is that, you know, if, uh, if the winter doesn't end fast, I mean, I think, I think there will be a lot of companies mm. which will be forced to merge with others or forced to shut down. You know, so. Yeah, you know, Rahul, and that's an important point that I want you to come in on. Uh, one is on what companies can actually do as far as costs are concerned, and we're seeing that across the board here in India as well. Startups laying off people, uh, shutting down businesses that are now uh, non-core and so on and so forth. But on the other aspect of being able to raise uh, uh, revenue, uh, be able to monetize customers, how hard is that going to be? I mean, we're, we haven't even seen how the Twitters and the metas of the world are going to be able to get customers to pay for the blue ticks and so on and so forth but to get customers in india who are already pretty price and value conscious to start to pay for services that so far they didn't have to i mean how easy is this pivot going to be and will everybody be able to make it um i i think of this like uh, like muscle building right muscle building doesn't happen overnight if if as a founder your muscle was built around the vocabulary of 
let's say GMV, then for you to start building your muscle around margins or a margin pool uh, and how much of that you can extract, uh, you know, logically speaking from your customer, that muscle building is, I think, at the core of this uh, change, right? And, you know, it doesn't come easy. Uh, cutting down on costs give you a slightly longer runway in order to build that muscle. But unless you're building that muscle, saving costs will only take you so long. What makes us who we are, if not the way we experience the world? Because while first class is something you can buy, world class is everything we do. Welcome to world class. Welcome to Singapore Airlines. Oh, hello, sir. Hello, Bertram. Pick me up in the airport, please. Uh, no, sir. No, why? Keys, sir, you have them. Now you do. Can I drive with this? I told you, Hector pampers me. The next gen MG Hector. It's a human thing. Helps beat sensitivity fast. Sensodyne Rapid Relief. Meet global thought leaders as they share their insights on advancing gender equality. For the first time, India now has a gender inclusion fund in our education policy to help build academic infrastructure, particularly aimed at young girls and women. A mega initiative to make gender parity an attainable reality. HSBC presents CNBC TV 18, Future Female Forward, the Women's Collective. Presented by HSBC. Knowledge Partner, Deloitte. Industry Partner, Fiki. Associate Partner, Reliance Industries Limited. Roger Long Life Flexo. This flexible film not only crack the game, but gives fungus civic protection. Ghar Shandar is the Burgera. Roger Long Life Flexo. Didi, Nokri lag gayi. Are you? Wow, badhai ho. To ab to dheer sari shopping. Hmm. Ha, Didi, naya mobile. Are you? Ruko, Shazade. सैलरी से पहले खर्चे इंस्टेंट लोन भी तो मिलता है पहले बजट बनाना सीखो फिर खर्च करो पर दीप देखो कमाई का एक हिस्सा हमेशा बचाना चाहिए लेकिन पार्टी देने से नहीं बचोगे तुम हाँ दी पार्टी मेरी बजट तुम्हारा अच्छा आरबीआई कहता है सही वित्तीय बर्ताव करें आपका बचाव Rahul, let's talk about what now and what next. And Nithin, I want to talk to you about what could uh, potentially be the answer out of this issue of the trouble that you talk about. One, of course, is to try and build a much more sustainable, resilient business, which means going back to the drawing board and examining your business model. Uh, the other is expectation setting. Uh, and I know that that is something that you believe in strongly as well. But what is the prescription to your mind to get out of this? Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things I've seen is, uh, see, there is almost an incentive in the private space to oversell, right? Because uh, the ones who sell well are the ones who are able to raise the most money, right? As in, um, and then once you get into that whole overselling zone, you know, once you set the expectation, because money, you know, whatever it is, you know, private investor or public market, right? I mean, money always comes with an obligation. So I think, I think the first thing people should do is, is, uh, set, you know, like you said, you know, set the right expectation for the investor. You know, you need, uh, you know, a VC to be on your cap table, uh, you know, for the right for the right reasons. You know, I mean, you don't want to be overselling to him just to be able to raise uh, capital, because you know, once you oversell, then you have to constantly keep doing whatever to kind of meet the expectations you have set. Uh, so I think one is that. Two is um, I think there's a lot of bloat in the industry. Uh, you know, people have hired. 
uh, mindlessly you know and uh, uh, i think i think you know some of the bloat has to be cut you know and uh, you know like what rahul was saying you know if you if you reduce your cost you at least yeah, you know get a you know much longer runway i think right now you know everyone should you know kind of plan for the worst case which is you know assuming that the next 2 3 years are going to be hard if you're not in the top 1 or 2 of you know whatever industry you are in it's going to be hard for number 3 and below uh, to raise yeah. money and so yeah so i think the first, uh, i mean the other thing to do is just to do whatever to ensure your runway is uh, you know extended as long as possible and and also try figuring ways in which you can start monetizing users and stop all the freebies and etc i mean it's hard to transition you know when you already built a business in a certain way but but i think you know this is one of those times where it has to be done uh, because if it's not done i don't know i don't know it'll be very hard to survive through mm. this cycle yeah it's it's not a matter of choice it it is a matter of necessity but rahul you know as uh, companies try and make this transition and to uh, nitin's point uh, that you know look at everything across uh, the board line item by line item and and cut the bloat but outside of being able to cut costs i mean how do you grow in an environment where the ecosystem is so used to cash backs discounts freebies i mean how do you stop the cash burn in the quest for customer acquisition in the quest for growth um let me give you an example right if you have a 10000 crore company that makes 1% margin versus you have a 1000 crore company that makes you know 20% margin which kind of company would you want to be right uh, historically people would obviously optimize for okay i want to be large i want to be a 10000 crore company uh, because hey uh, you know money is free flowing i can continue to do this forever um and you know we we seem to think this is such a big deal but you know all uh, if you look at all traditional companies it's not like they've not worried about their cash flow in the past right i think people need to become a lot more responsible about how they treat their businesses both on the cost side as well as the revenue side that i think is number one and b i mean yeah it is difficult yes it is painful uh, but you got to make the choice today that you want to be surviving and be one of the top 2 or 3 like nitin said uh, if you are not there you are not really going to be valuable yeah it would come back to the rule of 3 essentially uh, uh, but uh, nitin you know coming back to you and and i think uh, this this would be helpful for many entrepreneurs who are watching this program uh, uh, of course you didn't have any obligation as far as what to deliver uh, to vcs or investors because you didn't have any uh, you you bootstrapped your way to being a profitable enterprise today if i were to ask you today what were the do's and the don'ts that you followed that will continue to be instructive in an environment like this what would you list out yeah i mean just be conscious about the cost of acquiring a customer right as in uh, until date we haven't spent any money acquiring a customer and you know it's a much harder way to build a business it you know it's, there is no way to build it fast you know it takes a lot of effort you no know, because you have to how, people will... how nitin break this down break this down for everyone who's watching you know in in the episode last week as well we said that on an average i mean on the higher end people are losing 9 rupees uh, to be able to get 1 rupee back the average is between a rupee and a half to 5 which is what unicorns are spending uh, you know that's the kind of burn we are seeing to be able to acquire customers how did you acquire customers without going down that road so thing is you know you can't build a business quickly i think right as in uh, you know i started trading the markets in the late 90s and uh, you know i think of zerola actually as like a 20 year plus journey so you know and uh, really you know as hitting the scale and all of this success has been after 15 years of you know of a lot of struggle so you know i think i think over the last 5 to 10 years uh, you know the you know somehow you know there has been this illusion that you can quickly build a business you no know, building business you know there are so many interconnections like you know it's growing a forest you know you can grow a tree but you know, i think growing a forest takes time so so i think i think you need to have uh, you know like patience uh, then the second thing is you know your product offering has to do the talking right i mean if 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 the product is very commoditized if if five people are selling the exact same thing it's yeah i mean 
I don't even know if you know if, if there's a point in running a business like that because you know you you, you at, at that point you know if it's a commoditized product you, you it automatically becomes the deepest pocket wins kind of game right as in so uh, so yeah so I think it's about constantly trying to you know up the product and because one of the things that I've seen with a lot of startups is they stop being like a startup very quickly all right as in I think uh, you know the, the whole business here is that you know like you know today's world is about the fast beating the slow and not beating the small. But startups very quickly become slow after raising money and building bloat. I think one of the reasons I think we've been you know whatever little success we've had is because even today we are probably as fast or faster than the you know even the youngest startups in our space. So. Uh, yeah, I think I think I think these two three things, and and also I think people have forgotten that the world has changed. You know, today is a very a world of interconnections, right? As in through social media. So if you offer something which is differentiated and and the user appreciates it, uh, I don't know if you really have to spend as much money as as you know you you had to spend like say ten fifteen years back. So the people people talk to each other about the products, you know. So uh, so yeah, so I think I think you know these these three three things. You know. Well, uh, stop being uh, or thinking like a startup as soon as you start to raise money. You have to uh, take on a different mindset, a different temperament. Rahul, uh, what, what would you list uh, as, uh, as the to-do list at this point in time uh, in a difficult and challenging environment? Um, first, I think number one, you know, um, in addition to the cost that you add when you add employees in a company, you also add a large amount of noise and a large amount of bandwidth being consumed towards managing people. Uh, I think one of the benefits of being small teams is that uh, significantly higher collaboration exists and that is where the nimbleness comes from. So I think that is absolutely up there in terms of what, uh, you know, what we, uh, what we think should happen. Um, and I think second is, you know, a lot of people talk about this, but a lot of people don't do this, which is, being obsessed with their customer and constantly innovating to deliver to what they want or they need, right? And I think it is in that that I think it's important that, uh, you know, role models like Zerodha, um, you know, spill the beans a lot more on that or share their experiences, right? Uh, I think that is what people learn from. Nitin Kamath and Rahul Taneja, many thanks for joining us here on the Unicorn Health Check, for giving us uh, uh, your take on what the problem is, uh, uh, diagnosing the problem, but more importantly, also helping us understand what the way ahead uh, could potentially look like and what uh, startups need to focus on to get themselves uh, out of this current uh, challenge. Thanks very much for your time. Appreciate you joining us here on Young Turks. With that, it is time for us to wrap up uh, this edition of Young Turks, the Unicorn Health Check. We'll be back with a lot more. Don't go anywhere, we're back in a minute.